Good afternoon, Jason here from Bohemia Bees, and we are going to talk a little bit about beeswax today. You know, a lot of beekeepers uh, will have beeswax left over, uh, extra beeswax from burr comb that's scraped off your, your colonies when you inspect them. Uh, if you are a, a beekeeper who does cutouts in which you remove colonies, you might get big pieces of comb from that. Or you might just have a frame uh, that has old comb in it that you can't use. Now, there's lots of uses for beeswax. And, you know, I think the, the most important thing to recognize is that, you know, the structure of honeycomb and beeswax in general is just amazing. It's amazing the, uh, the actual uh, ability that these bees have to create such an amazing structure. Uh, you'll see uh, the honeycomb pattern. And this is actually wax that's extruded from the abdomen of the bee on uh, on their on the day twelve when they're aged they're aged twelve days old. They begin to meal, to emit that and they build that honeycomb out. Uh, one thing that most people don't know is that that entire piece of honeycomb, if uh, used for certain purposes, is not always usable at the end. This is not one giant block of wax per se. So let's dissect that a little bit and understand what the difference is, uh, what you can use, how you could uh, render it, and what you could use for it. So I show you this um, image because I want to point out that the honeycomb is used really for a lot of different things. Uh, they start developing wax, like I said, around day 12. And then they use that wax when they extrude it and build it out. And is, is a sort of a storage, right? It's a storage for honey, uh, it's a storage for pollen, and it's a storage really for brood. Uh, it's a place to let nest their brood in. One unique thing that you can find out about honeycomb or see about honeycomb is that when it's in a colony and it's hanging from a honeycomb uh, piece that's in a, hot, in a hive or in a colony, it's usually angled. So you can see it's angled up. And that angling allows for the, the pollen or the wax to kind of drip to the back or go to the back, be pushed to the back and keep it like a little storage and not fall out. But it's also used so that they can, you know, build out their, uh, their, their brood nest and the queen can lay eggs in it. So you see the queen will lay an egg, it will mature, uh, a worker bee will be capped over in a flat capping and a uh, drone will be will be a bullet shaped capping and, and naturally if you have a queen uh, it will be more looking like a, um, a, a peanut or piece that comes out sort of like this picture here okay so that's the interesting thing about honeycomb and the structure of honeycomb let's get into the rendering of honeycomb and, and what happens after that happens so we recently did a video, and I'll put a link here in the description on how to render honeycomb. There's really two ways to do it. Um, it, it the cleanest way, or the, the basic way that most beekeepers for you know a long time have done it, is a solar wax melter. And that's this is what really what a solar wax melter would look like. And uh, the purpose of that is to allow the sun to heat the pieces of wax that you see here and it will drip down into a pan um, and you could go ahead and use it for other things. Uh, we created recently uh, something that's not new, but it's just something that I rebuilt differently. Uh, and again, I'll put a link to it in the description, a steam wax belt, uh, melter, which just speeds the process up and it actually sort of somewhat cleans the wax a little bit, gets all the impurities uh, out of it. Instead of having to do it numerous times, you, you typically only have to do it once or twice. Uh, but when you look at wax, um, and there's a unique thing about wax in that, again, if it's naturally drawn, it's, it's actually primarily wax if it's used in the honey supers. If it's used in the brood's nest, it's actually not 100% wax. So after we've rendered down our wax, as you can see here in our steam melter, this is just an example of what wax would look like as it dripped down into our water bucket. Um, you can see it would drip down and this is the end result of, you know, purified wax from there. But that's not all what's in that wax. If we come over to our strain basket here, our bag, 
and we start to look at what's in the bag after all the wax is melted out of it, you still have a pretty big chunk of something here. It doesn't have a pleasant smell. Um, it looks kind of gross, um, but really what it is, is, is if you notice, there's looks like these little pieces, okay? They look like little pieces of shells, okay? That's actually the casings, the linings that exist within the wax formation. So as a, uh, a baby, as an egg is laid and a, a pupa larva develop within those cells, these little casings right here are created in the inside. And the more brood that's laid, um, the more they'll, they'll uh, have a, a thicker casing in there uh, in that particular cell. Um, this particular one that I have here looks like it has some pollen left in it. Uh, but you can see there's really not a lot of wax because this kind of just falls apart. It's not sticky anymore like wax. It's all just the cappings from um, from the, uh, the cells. All the wax has been melted out of it. Um, so what do you do with all that wax? Well, naturally you throw those cappings away. Uh, there's nothing you can do with that. But you have this beautiful golden wax that you can do a whole host of things with it. Um, you could recoat frames if you use a foundation frame you could roll that on and I, I can also put a link to the video in here to that to show you how we do that uh, and that helps the, the bees draw out this particular frame you see over here is a piece of foundation and it's an older piece of foundation um, but you can see uh, the, the structure in the background or the black background allows the bees to develop consistent pattern of hexagon. If you let them go to their own devices and they naturally drew out that comb, you know, they'll put some drone comb, they'll put some other comb uh, size cells, um, but they'll fill in the cavity based on how they want. Uh, but if you're trying to control that into a singular frame and make it all just standard brood uh, size or, or for honey, um, then that foundation is helpful because it gives them a, a structure to start with a little honeycomb shape. Um, so once you have the wax and it's melted down, you see here, and you've cleaned it a few times, you can run it in, melt it down and pour it into a mold and you get things like this. So now you have natural beeswax candles. Uh, and that's a common thing done with beeswax beyond just coating the frames. Um, you can actually sell these. Um, the beauty with beeswax um, is you can do a lot of things like make lip balm. Uh, you can do other types of uh, uh, polished waxes, things like that. But the candles are the one thing that are the easiest thing to do if you have a mold. You can make a mold out of anything. There's lots of different kits online. In fact, I'll put a link here in the description or in below to a, a way you can make your own molds. Um, I haven't done a video on that yet, but I can definitely put a link to you can buy the, the kit to do that. Uh, but these are just examples of, of candles. Uh, one thing I will say about beeswax, uh, in addition to its amazing structure, the honeycomb structure, and the smell that comes from wax um, in general. Uh, you can't smell it on the video, but I can smell it just standing here. The beeswax has such an amazing smell. Uh, the one thing that most people don't know about beeswax is that when you burn it, it is not a petroleum-based um, uh, melting substance. It, it actually is, is not, so it will not emit a diesel fume. So most candles that have a petroleum-based, um, you know, base to it, it will, when it burns, when you burn it on and light it, it will actually emit diesel fuel. So it puts basically pollutants in the air when you burn a regular candle. Now, not to a large extent, so burning a candle is always nice, um, but in any, any way you can utilize beeswax, because it's not petroleum based, it actually puts off negative ions in the air um, that helps balance out the positive ions. And it gives a, people say that it gives a calming effect. People say that it actually sometimes purifies the air. Um, and so, you burning natural beeswax candles is always uh, preferred over petroleum-based candles, and they're just such an amazing smell. Uh, you can add different, you know, or, you know, essence to it, lavender, others to give off a different smell if you would like. But beeswax in general is such an amazing, amazing thing from the structure of the comb and how the bees make it uh, to, the, to the smell and the, and the beauty of, of a candle that you can make afterwards. Um, I think it's just an amazing uh, piece that bees do beyond making honey and other great things that they do. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I, again, I was trying to find something different related to beeswax that I could explain the structure of beeswax, some of the stuff you might see at the end uh, when you're done filtering beeswax. 
and uh, what you can do with that beeswax. So thanks for watching. If you like the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Please follow us on Facebook and all our other social media. We're all over Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, whatever your social media preference is, we're all over the place. We love to share content about our bees and learn with the bees as you learn with us. Um, because here at Bohemia Apiary, uh, beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession.